Hello, listeners of the Art Versations Pod Cast. Welcome back to the Art Forsations podcast. It's a Tuesday. What? Feels a bit weird, but I was having what I like to call a day yesterday and didn't get to finish up editing this episode. But I'm desperate to give you your weekly fix of Art Forsations. So here it is now. You're listening to it currently. And I thank you for that. If you're just tuning in for the first time, hi, I'm Brie, like the cheese, host and producer of the Art Versations podcast. We are about halfway through the season, and if you like what you hear, head over to the subscribe button on Apple Podcasts or the follow button on Spotify and check out the other episodes this season. The first half was so much fun, and I'm super stoked to give you the last half of this season, so be sure to follow along as we cast this pod. This week, I chatted with Claire Dijon over Zoom. She's a singer-songwriter mostly, but you'll find from our chat that she has all these other projects coming up. Um, Definitely a busy gal. So check out her socials for more updates so you can check out what she's up to. Um, Yeah, it was really nice. We actually recorded it on election night, so things were a little bit up in the air, but uh, she's super talented and very, very humble. Um, So without further ado, a day late and all that... (laughs) Here is episode seven of season three. Oh, wow. I could talk about music for so long. Let's do it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like. Hi, Claire. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm I'm here. You are here. But you're not, well, you're not here. You're over Zoom. I wish you yes. were here with me. You're in Dallas yeah. right now. I am. I'm in Dallas. I'm home-ish. I'm literally just shacking up and <laughs> having a fun weekend. Yeah, that's Home it. for a little bit. You said that you were you were taking classes in Ann Arbor, but online Mm -hmm. at University of Michigan. So you were living in the place that you were taking it, but you still weren't able to go on campus. That's so frustrating. Yeah. I mean, for, it's really crazy. Like right now we're currently in November, I guess. So our stay at home order is done, but we were, we had a stay at home order um, for most of our undergraduates, I guess. Um, Okay. But yeah, so I've been taking all my classes online through Zoom, but I live in Ann Arbor and in a building and um, with roommates that are in my same program. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, just tapping away and doing ballet in our kitchen. And (laughs) it's, it's a time, but it's like, how the heck are we gonna forget this? Like, it's Mm -hmm. so weird. Yeah. I've Some, yeah, something so memorable and like musical theater, learning musical theater online. Like I can't imagine that would be easy at all, no. you know, to not be in the space with everyone. Yes. And like singing over Zoom, like what? Why? How do you even do that? <laughs> you, I mean, you just do it. it. I don't know how it works. It kind of works in a way, mm. but um, I pretty much feel like, you know, when you're, um, like in elementary school, middle school, and you're like singing Defying Gravity karaoke track off of YouTube. Oh, like yeah. that's, that's how I feel all oh. the time. I'm just like in my room pretending to be Elphaba, like screlting to my neighbors. And that's just how it goes. Like I really have no choice. Oh it's my It's kind goodness. of nostalgic though. It's fun. Hmm. Yeah, I <laughs> guess it's... It feels like <laughs> when you were little and you were like, I just need to have someone accompany me right now just yes. to be able to sing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Not, it's not as great as having like a live musician who can, you know, make cuts and do things like that, I guess. Eh? <sighs> no, I miss like we have live piano for all of our 
ballet and tap classes, which is like one of my favorite things about Michigan. And we aren't able to have that anymore. And like live accompaniment for our studio, which is like where we sing and you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, those, those moments of magic, I really miss. Like that was probably my favorite part is just connecting with everybody and that but we'll yeah. get there we'll get there i i believe it and i'm enjoying um kind of discovering the stuff on my own and how i can connect to something by myself like in isolation i guess mm, that makes sense a, yeah actually that, that, that's a good point i guess you can you feel so individual you don't have to like mold to anything or you don't have to um i guess you can really like do your own thing like get on top of whatever you want to work on that day or something yeah. like that that's kind of cool yeah it is it's interesting it's it puts more um pressure on personal like growth and personal artistry which is something I'm struggling with honestly like I never realized how much I need others to push me and mm. um it's it's a big like learning curve but I think it's helpful in the long run for sure Mm -hmm. yeah. maybe yeah maybe once you graduate you'll feel like you have a better understanding of what you want to do in yeah. your process yeah absolutely interesting you know me I'm like all over <laughs> the place like I, I literally still don't know what I want to do but I just want to do everything and that's what I'm doing like that's really it yeah the great quality to have I don't well, think that's a bad thing thank you <laughs> Oh gosh. I feel there's like a saying, you know, like wearing many hats, right? Mm. Like not just being, you know, like, I guess I, like for me, I would, I would sort of, I don't like labels, but I, like you are like a singer songwriter, like that's m mostly where you focus on, but then yeah. you're an, also an actor. Um, you, you make vlogs, like you have all of these little tiny projects that you, you work on. And then it's like, you're more like an artist, not just, right. you know, one label. Yes, I'm trying to live more artistically rather than like, I feel like if I focus, I've, I've had moments in my life where I focused on like a certain thing. Like whenever I was doing the voice, I was like, I'm going to be a singer. That's mm. my track. I, yeah, I like, I didn't even know what I was going to go to college for if, if I was going to go to college mm -hmm. um, during that time, whenever I was doing that. And I feel like I'm a lot happier now that I've kind of, you know, grown out of that era. And yeah. like, I just find more joy in my life when I'm living artistically and like taking in inspiration from everything and using it for everything because it's just, it's all enjoyable. Like, yeah. why would I limit myself? Um, and sometimes like, I, I, I don't know, it's hard to write sometimes and it's hard to do that and I think sometimes if you put yourself in a box like it makes it more difficult for me at least mm -hmm. yeah because yeah. then yeah. you're stuck there right yeah <laughs> and you made those boundaries right or like, I know I make those yeah. boundaries <laughs> yes yes it's so it's yeah. such a yeah. like fucking game when you're with yourself I don't I don't know like I said, I'm still trying to figure it out, like yeah, everything, time. but mm -hmm. um, that's just what I'm doing now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I remember when I met you, you had just, or maybe it was a couple of years after from that, that big moment of being on The Voice, right? And, yeah. And, and yeah, being on TV and like having like one track, like you say, like that's so much pressure to just be that one thing, to put yourself in that one category so that whoever's watching is like, oh, okay. So she's that thing. And I'm going to watch her for that thing only. Right. right? But yes. I think you've, you've grown out of it. You, you, I remember you talking to me about how you was, weren't sure if you were going to go to school, it was the right fit for you and, and wanting to sort of branch out outside of that, that Claire, the voice thing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, the whole thing with TV, like the great thing and the worst thing mm. is like that just is like not really reality tv I will say like is not really who I am and I mean I did you don't have much control over how you're portrayed even though like 
it's you, like they barely know me. They've spent yeah. like maybe like a few weeks with me before they started, you know, filming this stuff and right. editing it. And it just seems like it's a different person. And to me, because I've, you know, I've lived with myself for now 20 years. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> Two decades. Two I decades know. old. Oh, God. <laughs> It's, it's creeping up on me. I, I don't even <laughs> want to talk about it. But yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, like I said, it's, it's just interesting to find yourself out of that situation, kind mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. like, still going back to school. And I honestly, like, like I said, with you, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I think going to school, especially Michigan, like, was the best thing I could have done. Oh, that's to great. Out, to, like be inspired by so many, like literally everyone that surrounds me, the nature that surrounded me, the faculty that taught, teaches me. Um, and like just everything being in that environment. I mean, it's kind of like TPAP. I mean, yeah. I just get like so much more creative when the energy is all about creation and, and love and that kind of stuff and lifting people up I guess yes right? yes lifting people up yeah do you high, have high any um, yeah, yeah yeah do you, do you have any like uh, professors or teachers or, or mentors at school that have like really influenced you or, or helped you discover new things about yourself I mean I would say like honestly I have or last year I had a professor Brent Wagner who um, is incredibly a notable man. And I totally was terrified to take his class. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that being terrified, you know, was a great thing for me because I learned so much from him. And like, when I went to Michigan, like if, even now I, I'm, I feel like I'm the worst at everything. And it's like, great because all I have to do is learn and like there's just so much <laughs> to learn there's so many things and yeah I think Brent Wagner's class really taught me like you are in charge of your own career you need to focus on you and not let he says this one thing that um, you can't move forward if you're looking sideways mm. and I love that because it's hard like freshman year of college going in and not comparing yourself to others and, you know, like getting cast and shows and projects and doing stuff. I, I was used to just always being a part of something and I found myself kind of empty handed and a little bit like in a place where I didn't feel happy about being at school. And then he just inspired me to take on projects that I had more control of or things that were more true to myself. And that's when I started get like literally being a part of the best projects that I've ever been a part of. And like, I don't know, it's, it's just crazy how that stuff works out when you finally focus on like the positive things. Mm. I guess that's kind of a, a way around the question, but Brent Wagner <laughs> is an amazing man. And yeah, I'm, I'm lucky to study with him. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know what you mean about like, feeling terrified of something and then it ends up being so needed and so valuable yes. <laughs> yes, literally and it was so hard like I studied for hours and it oh. was just it's all like about Broadway and the industry and stuff that I I mean I don't know I didn't really come from more of that background I came more from like a pop background right. so mm -hmm. I mean what I thought I knew about Broadway I really knew nothing like head <laughs> empty I <laughs> so I learned so much and I just he inspired me to like want to be a better more informed like the more informed you are the better you are mm. so I just that's like my goal and I need to get back to that but mm -hmm. it's a weird time right now um <laughs> so many yeah. little goals right there's so many <laughs> things it's crazy yeah, but yeah. yeah I don't know that's that mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. Uh, yeah. To have someone who can, to, to show you that you don't have to look to other people. You can look inward. That's all yeah. you have to do. Yeah. That's the, that's so 
that's so beautiful. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. And yeah. it's so simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I mean, I'm inspired by, I look up to everybody, mm -hmm. like so many people like Michigan grads, you know, people from TPAP, you, my friend Eloise, mm -hmm. um, like my boyfriend, like literally mm -hmm. everyone, um, you know, pushes me to be a better person in different ways. But like in the end, you're in charge of what you do to make yourself better yes. and it's like putting in the work yourself I think is what I see it as mm -hmm. yeah. definitely definitely yeah. yeah I mean I was I was creeping a little bit and I saw that you did um a summer concert uh to support black trans lives and it was a, it was yeah. with Michigan right I believe um, it was, it was actually organized all through Samantha Rios, who is an amazing woman. I'm oh, cool. inspired by her every single fucking day. She's my roommate. Oh, lovely. <laughs> and I love her. She organized it all, like created the cast and it was actually like cross MT. So we had a lot of Michigan students because like she goes there and she organized it. Mm -hmm. um, but we also had students from like Carnegie, uh, Penn State, wow. NYU, I'm forgetting, oh, CCM, like so many, I, I don't even know, like literally yeah. so many places. Um, and it was just so cool. And like Broadway stars came in and mm. did little tidbits, but it was, it was a moving experience to be a part of. Yeah. Very cool. Very yeah. powerful, especially right now yeah to real. use your art to you know be activists and to to not just do it for the sake of doing it but yeah for the sake of other people and and uh, generosity yeah that's wonderful yeah yeah, yeah. I wish and I could have seen it I, I missed it <laughs> it's okay it was yeah. it was um it was at a weird time it was like that little period of quarantine mm. where I don't know we were about to go back to school and everything was crazy but you know mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll do it again. I think that there's, well, I know that there's way more to be done and mm. that's just a small thing, but I don't think that you should look down upon the small things. I think everything builds into the bigger picture. So. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. So, so you're in class, you're, you're doing online. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like this, this, this school is so great. It, it I, I think of all of the alum that come from this school, like, like Gavin Creel or, you know, like I'm even thinking of like Star Kid and all of what yeah. they've done, you know, like I, I, I wonder sort of where you'll take yourself because it feels like you could go in to Broadway, but you could also go like in these other directions as well. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah, it's crazy. And like Ashley Park is doing that Emily Par Emily in Paris show and yes. that's amazing and she was just in Mean Girls and yeah. she was she's in movies like that's I think that's what I want to do like I I mean it depends on what it looks like when I graduate or whatever but um, what the hell is the theater yeah, industry at this like, point? <laughs> I don't know like, if it'll be there but I know like I'm very interested in film and I I've worked a little bit on some of that stuff this year um, and that looks like it's a big promise for the future so mm -hmm, maybe mm -hmm. that's in the future in the cards I don't know who knows <laughs> but you know me in my live theater I love it so hopefully that hopefully writing stuff um, yeah I don't know We'll see. I'm like you too. I love the live theater, even though right. it's non-existent at this point. <laughs> I know, but it will be back. Yeah, it will be back. It yeah. has to. It ha it has to come back, right? I know. What What the hell is New York without theater? Exactly. It can't. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. So so let's shift gears a little bit. We could talk about what you're working on right now. You say that you have um, a new song and a video coming out. Yes, oh, so I exciting. do. I Tell haven't. Me about it. I haven't set any dates or said anything. So you're the first, Ooh. you're the first <gasps> promo. Exclusive. Exclusive look. I'm very um, honored. But yeah, I have a song coming out, um, a single. My nice. first single ever released, like all written by me, all under my name. And cool. I'm very excited. I'm not going to tell you what it's called because I haven't released anything yet. No problem. Um, but I 
just finished shooting, but we still have a little bit more to do, but I'm in the process of shooting the video for it as well, which is being shot in Michigan by an amazing man, Nick Gridsley, and okay. starring some of my very talented friends. So I'm so stoked to like see it all come together and finally put something of my own out in the world. Um, cool. Yeah, you know me. Yeah. I've been sitting on my stuff for a minute. So <laughs> it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's crazy. It's like not real. Well, while you're in school, you know, it's like you don't have a lot of time to work no, on this. No, literally. Project. Yeah, yeah, no. No, don't, I rec- don't beat yourself up for that. <laughs> no, I mean, I recorded this song that I'm releasing um, before I even was a freshman in college. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah, and I mixed it all last year. I think it got finished probably about a year ago today. Okay. And like, it's finally coming together, but it's okay like for things to take time. I'd rather it be like that and be what I want it to be than rush it out. And yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You feel like it's ready to be released. Yeah, I think Mm -hmm. so. I mean, it's a good representation of where I am right now. And I, I mean, I, I'm excited to put more stuff out. That's more true to who I am as like a 20 year old woman, but yeah. um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to have something out <laughs> and it's a great project. I really have loved every part of the process. Nice. Is it going to be released like everywhere kind of thing? Like Spotify, Apple, yeah, all Spotify, that stuff? Yeah, Spotify, Apple Wonderful. Music. The video will be on YouTube. Cool. On my YouTube channel. Oh, she's a vlogger. <laughs> oh. But um, cool, yeah, cool. yeah. Anyways, that's that. I mean, yeah. We'll see. Um, I'm hoping for like a fall winter release so soon. Wonderful. Yeah. But I got to get it all figured out before I spill the beans. No problem. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm like happy to, you know, help to promote it in any way and yeah. let me know when it does come out so I can put it on the, the podcast Instagram for sure. Great. Yeah. I'll put it, I'll put in a word. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. Yeah. So you can't, you can't give me too much info, but no. at least you've got something coming. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. And then you also mentioned to me that you're going to be hopefully singing on a song cy- a cycle in, yes. the, in the winter, maybe, I think you said. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, this has had like promotion and it's been a while. Okay. Um, Who's but it with? It's a project called 16 Stories. Um, oh, and it's okay. through, it's going to be released through Broadway Records. Oh, um, yeah. Cool. So pretty exciting stuff. Very. Um, it was, I'm like com- completely done with all of it. It's kind of out of my hands now. But gotcha. um, yeah, it was, it's actually a song. Basically, 16 Stories is 16 different pieces from compo- 16 different composers. Okay. Um, and the way that I heard about it is from Nico Benson. I don't know if you know him, but he's a TPAP alumni, um, Maybe like I faculty do. alum. And okay. I'm not sure if he was there. Or he might not have been at Company 8. But... Maybe not, but um, yeah. he's great and you'll meet him someday. He's, mm-hmm. he's amazing. But um, Probably. yeah, so basically like I became a part of this project. Um, The composer for my piece is Drew Lane. Um, He's an Australian composer. And yeah, all of the pieces are accompanied by the Australian Discovery Orchestra. So like a huge- An orchestra. Literally like the coolest thing ever. Um, It's amazing. Yeah, it was crazy. And I'm so grateful to be a part of it. I recorded it in New York like a year ago. But because of, um, you know, everything that's happening in the world, the release is pushed. Okay. So it'll, I think, I can't say because I don't know if I have like a contract, um, contractual agreement or anything. Yeah, no problem at all. But I'm, I want to say like, I'm hoping for the winter release. Cool. I think that that's when it'll be. That's like what I'm hoping. (laughs) Yeah. As long as everything goes according to plan. Right. But I'm excited mm-hmm. for you guys to hear it because it's simply amazing. Like I love my song and I also love the other songs on it. And it's just really a lot of cool stories connected to every little piece of it. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause a song cycle, I'm, I'm a little bit ignorant on it. It, it it's kind of like um, a cast album, but 
not like from one show is that the idea right yeah, yeah okay. I would say like think about oh, what's a song cycle album isn't there like one that's called like songs for a new world mm -hmm. Songs for a new, I guess, I don't know. I would or, consider Songs for a New World more of like a musical type of thing. Well, I don't oh, okay. know. Because it has like a story, mm. but maybe. Okay. Um, I'm thinking like, you know when a composer will like put out an album of kind of just like their music? Here, let me look at my song. Oh. There's a composer's name, composer. <laughs> Kerrigan. Kerrigan and Ladder Milk. Milk. Yes. yes. Okay, so okay. they have an album called Our First Mistake. Oh, okay. And it okay. has just like all of those different pieces that they've written. So that's what like my definition of a song cycle would be. Like if I were thinking, because yeah. I grew up listening to that album and yeah, it's, this is just like a collection of stories. So there's no, I mean, maybe in the way they organize it, but in the way that I know it, like there's no really arc or anything. It's just kind mm. of stories and, and beautiful music and yay. Yeah, with an orchestra <laughs> for sure. Right, with a giant ass orchestra. Oh. So excited. <laughs> oh, like that's another thing that I miss, like going to see like a ballet or like a live show with like, a 16 piece orchestra or like even bigger than that and like having all of these instruments come together it's it's stunning it, it's it's so like ethereal like it, it doesn't even like it really puts me in a place of I'm listening to this and I'm feeling something not so much mm -hmm. as like I'm just listening to this because it's like it has math to it or anything yeah. it's so like out of body gets me in my emotions for sure yes you know what I mean I'm obsessed like I've always been obsessed with orchestra and mm. just like I'm always incredibly moved by music like I think it's just an emotional I mean it's literally ex expression of emotions mm -hmm, through mm -hmm. text and through like notes <laughs> it's so weird but <laughs> so cool and I, yeah so, weird, so cool <laughs> literally like that's it it's like how did we come up with this <laughs> like god um but yeah did no, you I, do love this? <laughs> I know or whatever higher power um yeah yeah, but, <laughs> yeah the universe somehow like gifted us this gift of literally. like music and you get to like consume it and just be like entranced by it. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, magic. it's magic. I'm one of those people like that, this is kind of a tangent, but like I'm one of these people that my mood will change based on the song that I'm listening to. Oh, Do you ever sure. find that? For sure. <laughs> yes. And I listen to music most of my life. Mm -hmm. I like, I'm not, I don't like, you know, I mean, I, <laughs> I was about to be like, I don't like, the sounds of nature. I don't like <laughs> the sounds of life, but that's not true. I, I do enjoy that. Um, but I feel like music enhances my life. Like I want to be walking on the street to my favorite song or like mm. listening to something in the car or listening to something on the plane. I don't know. It's just, yeah. I, or in my room, I, I just always have had music in, in my life. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. It keeps me sane for sure. Yeah. Yeah. In some ways, it's almost like the only thing that like makes sense right now. Yes. Having like a playlist that I can go to when I need to escape or when I need to laugh or when I need to cry, like yes. dealing with those emotions of, you know, the current state that we're in, like music is the only way I can do that. Right. Survive through it. It's crazy. And like what you were saying about the other moods. Oh, wow. I could talk about music for so long. Let's do it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, I don't know. It's like I even found myself during quarantine and now still like going back. And like, yes, there's like so much great music now. Like Taylor Swift came out with her folklore album and I was don't like I'm healed get me started on folklore <laughs> but, right so good I was so like glad you brought that it, Taylor why why are like, you doing this to me right now I know out of nowhere too she like puts it out in August just being like oh wait I have an album for you it's like and... LMAO casual album like casual maybe one of her best I wouldn't well let's not get into if I talk about Taylor Swift <laughs> 
<laughs> it's over. It's over. <laughs> but anyways, like <laughs> that came out like so many great pieces about like movements and, and like getting through this together. And mm. I mean, all that stuff is amazing, but also literally me like going back and listening to like rain on me by Ariana Grande or mm-hmm. like, like, party songs that I used to listen to when I would hang out with my friends um <laughs> like I don't just know just to remember what that social like interaction yeah, feels like, like again <laughs> literally just to remember that yeah. and and it's just like nostalgic at the same time that it is moving and mm. it puts me in a different place like I associate so much of my life with the playlist that I listened to during that mm. time and the artists that I listen to and I also see how like that influences my writing mm. like it's it's really weird it's yeah cool though I mm-hmm. I like that but I forget and then I go back and I'm like holy shit whoa <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is why I wrote about this thing or like yeah. you know yeah where like my phrasing, emotions are mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. like phrasing musical you know like patterns and picking and you know like just all that all that stuff that each artist has you know you steal not steal you you pick things that inspire Uh, you and it influences your work it's really cool I think it's okay to to steal or maybe not steal like almost like borrow yeah to enhance or to rework like you know there's that expression of like steal like an artist right I don't know if you've heard of that there's like a book on it too but it's like it's not like we're you know like taking this thing that that someone else created we're we're using it and then we're gonna like output it in a different way and I think that it's totally okay I think unless it's like licensed or whatever I don't know right I mean mean? it's like it's like covering somebody's song right like I think that that's beautiful and like some covers that I've heard are my favorite compared to the original Mm -hmm. um oh my god there's a cover that I was obsessed with during quarantine it was like a Spotify Spotify single whatever you know those ones yeah yeah, yeah. like a Spotify Um, something. yeah I think it was by it's uh I love oh that you, you have your Spotify open during this. Oh this I of course like I couldn't <laughs> do it. I'm it's, also a Spotifyer. Right? Okay. Yeah. It's Muna's cover of motivation by I think uh Kalani. Norm- Kalani. Normani. Normani, Normani, Normani by Normani. Ooh. I was like, somebody in Fifth Harmony. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I had never even heard her song before, and I was like, this song is a bop. And then I went and listened to her song and I was like, okay, the song is Bob too, Mm -hmm. but it's just different. I just love like, and also Maggie Rogers has a Spotify cover of um, Tim McGraw by Taylor Swift. Get out. Oh my God. Wait, you gotta listen to it. It's crazy. It's literally crazy. Maggie Rogers and Taylor Swift. Ooh. Yes. It's crazy. Like the words. Cause it's, it was Tim McGraw was like, I think one of her first like her first album for sure yeah it, it was had to definitely on yeah like, that teardrop very country guitar. yeah 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 yeah. and I think it might have even been like literally her first single yeah but, um oh my god that cover is insane everybody go watch uh, go listen yes um, go stream it <laughs> stream Tim McGraw <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead okay yeah anyways cool, I, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah yeah that's that's that on that I don't even know where I went with all of that I don't know either. (laughs) This is the podcast. We We can go on these tangents. (laughs) Yeah. I I mean, what's great about Spotify Mm -hmm. over like Apple music. I know a lot of people use Apple music, but I'm, I'm such Mm -hmm. a big believer in Spotify because it, 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 some algorithm, whatever they do in their algorithm is it, it, it shows you music that you will actually listen to based on a song, right? Like the song radios, I find them to be very accurate. I think every time I, click on this on radio or I just like let it play and it shuffles to a new song I'm like yeah I did want to listen to this how did you know you know yeah no it's like scary I'm like whoa they know (laughs) um, yeah no I love that's how I find most of my music and that's how artists like I mean I'm about to put out some music and like the first like the most thing the most high words Um, The most like important thing, I guess, I'm not really putting it out to like blow up. I'm not going to blow up, but like 
the most important thing that everybody tells you is like, get on a playlist, get on a Spotify playlist. Like, mm. because that's the way, like they put together those playlists or your music will come up and you discover like these smaller artists. And it's so cool. It's like, how would we be able to connect to everybody? Like, in the past I don't know it's mm-hmm. it's so interesting to me I'm grateful that we have that now especially as like a new artist mm-hmm. different yeah. from you know vinyls or a tracks or like oh yeah cds you know like I grew up uh, with cds but like me too right yeah yeah Ali and AJ Selena Gomez in the scene yes <laughs> Miley freak out whatever that so one was good. you know the one yes yeah. I do <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a different um, method of distribution, I guess you could say. Yeah. You're not so much, um, you're, you're, you're listening to someone's album versus just one of their songs or like who they're influenced by or who they would be next to on a Spotify playlist. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's different when I, as a consumer, like I'm interested in one person and then I hear about all these like multiple other people that I could be interested in as well. And then all of a sudden I'm, I'm so much more in tune with that kind of style of music or that genre, I guess you could say. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's changing. Do you like, I'm wondering even too, like with like number of streams and all that stuff, like that's so, that's so much pressure to like try and beat people like competitively. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know like, nothing about it, so. I don't, I, I've i learned about all that stuff because of, you know, my, like, prior experience with the industry, but mm-hmm. um, for me, like, I'm not releasing music for that reason, mm. so yes, like, those things are important, especially if, like, that's what you want to do. Yeah. And like, I'm not planning on like planning a world tour, like no way, <laughs> Jose, but um, maybe in the future, maybe, I mean, who knows, <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah. like I know right now, yeah, I just streams and numbers and it's all, it's social media, even like, it's all yeah. just a lot of stress. And I don't really, if I put pressure on that, I'm going to stress myself out. And I would rather just put out something I love, see how it does and continue. And if something comes out of it, then it's meant to be, um, of course, like I'm going to push on my social media and be like, go listen to my song. Cause that's my <laughs> audience. Yeah. But, um, I, I don't have the means to like promote things. I pay for like crazy production amount and like PR and all that stuff so Mm. I'm kind of just doing it and seeing where it takes me I guess you could say that's kind of what I'm thinking right now that's great yeah I feel like then you'll be more proud of your work you know yeah exactly same thing for me like when I put things out like on YouTube or on my Instagram like it's right I'm not getting paid to do that I just want to share it Yes, that's I wanna, exactly it. I want people to see it because I'm, yeah. you know, I'm proud of it or I've, I've worked on it for, you know, like two years sometimes with your Literally. song, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yes, like I made this thing from the ground up and I want to tell this story to you. I want to share this with you. And even the video, like it's, it hasn't taken that long to get it all together, but I didn't know what I wanted it to be until this year. Mm. And now it's exactly what I want it to be. And it's worth it. Like it's, and yes, I'm paying like a little bit. I mean, I have to like, like we have to pay each other some way, but like most of like everybody that's working on it is just doing it to be a part of it. And that's like, it's just so exciting to like have a crew that cares more about the art than the money. Mm. Um, But yeah you know, money, 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 <laughs> money makes the world go around. It does, it does. I know. Ugh, yeah. Gross. Yeah. Anyways. That's, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's great. I, I am, I'm with you on that. I, I, the more that you can be in it for yourself, in it for the, the project that you're working on, in it for the people that you're working with, mm-hmm. it, things maybe will even turn out more genuine, more authentic, more relatable more you know 
Yeah. That's so robotically engineered. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Like I, I, I love Ariana Grande, but I'm not her. <laughs> Like, I'm not her. Yeah. No, I look like this. And like, that's great. Like, I want to be this. Yes. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but. <laughs> it does to me. It does to me. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. That's how I feel. Yeah. yeah. I know. You can compare yourself to these big moguls who, you know, like, who have oodles of money to spend on, like you say, PR engineering yes. all of these songs in the studio with like you know all these producers and stuff and yes and like filming the videos like a movie yeah. like a motion picture like yeah you're amazing and like I aspire to be you but I'm not yeah so I'm filming yeah. it in my backyard with your friends like, and stuff yeah with my friends yeah, yeah. that's wonderful <laughs> I love it I love Thanks. it I'm wondering too like um what your process for writing music is I know it's probably up and down but what kind of, um, where do you start? Like, what's the first little bit? Is it the lyrics? Is it the notes? Is it mm. what usually comes first? I feel like it always depends on like where I am in life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what the most consistent thing for me is like, I am like obsessed with like words um, and writing. And I have like notes in my in my notes app and, mm. and just like little phrases and words or ideas. But I feel like everything stems from like something that I've experienced or like an idea that I think of, um, but like worded a certain way to okay. move it into something else. Like, I feel like I usually start with a lyric mm. um, cause I'm not the best, like I'm not the best musician, um, like composer. I would say, but, um, You're so humble. no, <laughs> thanks Brie. But like, no, I, <laughs> um, I'm, I struggle with that. Like I'm not the yeah. most experienced musician, but like words come naturally to me mm. and it's made my music come more naturally as mm. well yeah. because I pretty much play by ear. Like I don't really, I'm not, um, I'm learning in school right now a lot about theory. About and, Oh, yeah, like notation and stuff. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. It's a lot. <laughs> it, I did piano growing up and it was like, I, yeah. don't even, I can't memorize all this. I know. And it's hard yeah. to learn at an, like a, at an older age, too. Um, mm. Mm. I can play guitar well, but like piano, I'm learning and it's hard for me. And I can, like I said, I can play by ear, but it's hard for me to learn like how to actually play. Right. Um, <laughs> and yeah, but that's why, yeah, I start from a place of lyrics and it mm -hmm. all kind of flows from there. And sometimes it's a very short process. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's very long. It just depends. Like the song that's coming out, I wrote it all in one night. Cool. Uh, but like, it took so long to like get it all together, but right, right. the original, like the demo was all done in a night. That's so fun. So, wow. Yeah. I know. I mean, I'm thinking of like Ellen's class, Ellen Winter's class at um <gasps> at TPAP. And yes. that was my like first introduction to songwriting. I was so confused and so stressed out. And I ended up writing my song like when we had the class, when we had to come back and like show right. or something. I wrote it like half an hour before class because I was just like, I don't know what to do. Okay, spew it all out and hope yes. something comes of it. It's funny how like some processes are fast and some are close or really slow, you know? Yes. It's like mm -hmm. sometimes it depends on the project. I mean, I yeah. was just working on, I didn't tell you this because it's like more of a school related thing, um, no worries. but I just worked on a piece. Like I composed a piece, no words. Wow. 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 Who am I? Um, <gasps> She's a composer. But, I know, look at me. <laughs> Um, but I composed a piece with my friend Zach Mitchell um, for a dance piece um, that's choreographed by my friend Chloe. Oh, wonderful. Um, yes, I'll have to send it to you whenever it's all done because I believe it'll be filmed and like um, put on probably some platform like YouTube. Um, yeah, but please send, please send. Yeah, she mm -hmm. came to me and um, we lived in freshman dorms together and like she was like, I need like copyright free music for this like six minute dance piece. Can you do it? And I was like, 
uh, I can try. <laughs> um, and so, Six minutes, oh my gosh. yeah, like I, I just started doing that and working on it and all of it's like sound bites from life and like pretty much drawing from my own experience and my own stories. But like with the help of my friend, Zach, I couldn't have done it alone at all. But um, cool. like putting it into a new, um, a new way of expressing like mm-hmm. music and that all took like a few days, but it's like this giant like baby that we've, you know, birthed. <laughs> and <laughs> it came right out of your vagina. Think I'm about, sure. Yeah. Just think about it. Think about it. <laughs> really, really uh, yeah. Yeah, a great image, but <laughs> sometimes it feels like that. God, can I just get this out? And yeah. <laughs> Vomit it or like Literally, sweat it out. Yeah, yes. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't even remember what we were talking about, but I think um, <laughs> you're working with Zach and, and Chloe. Yeah, yeah, working with Zach and Chloe, and and just getting that, like, just forcing it out of yourself. Mm. I feel was like it like timeline wise. Yeah, like was it tied with school, like as an assignment, or was it a completely like outside project? I mean, her piece, I think, was a. She's a dance major, so I'm not like really affiliated with her program, but um, I'm not sure if it was for like a, I don't think it was like an outside project, but it was Mm. definitely like a devised piece for um, her programs, like maybe showcase or something. Okay, cool. Um, Yeah, please send it. I'd love to see it when it's done. Yeah, I'll send it for sure. It'll, (laughs) all of our stuff right now is like pretty much like student mostly like students kind of taking the wheel on their own projects Mm -hmm. um, which can be interesting and Mm. frustrating for like college but um I've learned a lot already by working on a few things Mm -hmm. yeah it's hard to work with your peers oh my god it's very hard yeah because you know you're also you're all going to school together. So you all right. have this sense of like, well, the teachers are going to look at this or like whoever it is is going to look at this and then we're all going to be graded on things. Like I remember feeling like that in, in university. I was like, well, if I'm working with you, but you're also on the same plane as me, like, I don't want there to be any like bad blood, but you know, like right. we do have to make this happen. We do have to like work through these things. Yeah. Sometimes there'd be arguments. Sometimes there'd be like, you know, the worst processes, but we still did it. We still had to do it, you know? Right. It's hard. It's incredibly hard, especially like with schedules and yeah, that's true. all oh that God, shit. That's like it's, it's so hard. And especially to like, I was kind of, not like I guess I was the messenger between like Chloe I was like the mediator because I know Zach and like I was working with him each night but then I would also like work with Chloe on my own and so it's hard to be like hard to collaborate in Mm. this climate of the world (laughs) and like Like, not being in person I guess yes and I haven't met like any of the dancers on the piece and and now even like we're still making changes I thought it was done but we're making changes and I'm happy we are because I want it to be the way that she wants it Mm. but um Mm. yeah it's just it's an interesting process and I would recommend that everybody uh, tries to collaborate with their peers because it reminds you how talented or like what talent you're surrounded by and it's inspiring and it's also like hard yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) you work through it you get it you get it done exactly cool cool yeah I mean the other thing I wanted to ask a little bit about is just like you know I was watching some of your YouTube videos and like just making little vlogs and little sort of snapshots of your summer and everything like that's so that's so fun like I'm a big YouTube fan I I enjoy that that like personalized video kind of idea and and what kind of you know uh, what where does your editing style come from or like who who do you watch on YouTube that you're influenced by to make these things oh I mean yeah like like you said I'm obsessed with like watching YouTube I think I just have a really short attention span (laughs) 
Um, so I like, yeah. Um, yeah. I like the instant, like, oh, wow, I'm so Gen Z, but like the instant, <laughs> like gratification of like a quick story and a quick video. Yes. Um, I think the people, the artists or what the YouTubers that I'm inspired <laughs> by, what are they like creators, creators, yeah, yeah. um, the creators, some of them are artists too, um, yeah. but just the women mostly that I'm inspired by. Um, I love Rachel Nguyen. I believe oh. that's how I pronounce it. If I, if not, I'm so sorry, I don't know um, her. but her handle is that chic. And I've literally watched her since I was like, I don't know, freshman in high school. Oh. And she just has the coolest like vision ever for everything. And I ins- like I aspire to be like her. She's she's an amazing um, advocate for like mental health too. And mm. great. And then also oh, Margot Margo Lee is another great one. She's a little bit bigger. Like she is more of a young following. Okay. Um, she just graduated from Syracuse University. Hmm. So like I felt connected to her because of like being a college a college girl, but like mm-hmm. also driven and wanting to work and like have a career, but also have fun and have friends um, and a normal life kind of, but like mm-hmm. being like a girl boss too at the same time. Cool. I love her. And I just like the way their videos are like natural. Um But I really just like capture moments and put them together so I can remember stuff. But maybe I'll like branch out into the more YouTube world, but I don't have time right now. (laughs) Yeah, no. (laughs) Too busy. (laughs) Yeah. It's cool because also this year was so unique, you know, of all of the years that we're sort of going through right now, like to have the memories of being in quarantine and not being able to see people and wearing masks Mm. and stuff. It's it's like a time capsule. Yeah, it's good to have. It seriously is. I yeah. I love it. I and I enjoy editing videos. I'm mm-hmm. not like everything's shot on my iPhone. Like I don't mm. have any and I edit everything by myself and make all my own like graphics and stuff. Cool. Um and I'm not very like I'm not very good at it, <laughs> but I'm it's it's fun. I just like learning new stuff and it was a fun outlet for me during quarantine for sure. Cool, cool. Yeah. yeah, it keeps you busy, keeps you like creative. Yeah. I know like a lot of people during quarantine like lost that creativity. Oh, for and sure. Still, I think a lot of people are. And I, yeah, I mean, anything you can do to keep your inspiration, you know, your sparks still alive. Yes. You know? Oh my gosh, the spark file. Oh, yeah. I love. I, love. I, love I always that. think about it like, who am I sparked by? I know. Literally. I, you know, it's, it's a kind of a better. I like the wording of it better than just being like, I'm influenced by this person. Like I'm sparked by them. It's like right. ignited or something. Yeah. Yes. You're ignited. And it's, it's like more um, like action, action oriented, I think, yeah. but I'm yeah. sparked by Susan Blackwell and Laura Camion. So and I'm I. also sparked by you. <laughs> so sparked by you. That's why I wanted you to come and sit with me. Oh, for an hour. Brie. <laughs> oh my God. My company oh yes you wow. helped me on that first day to like feel so welcome I, I think you I'm that. glad you helped me too mm-hmm. it's hard like that's a vulnerable time I was so confused when I got the TPAP first right. of all I was I was like a day late because I me too flight. that's right yeah, too. yeah that's probably why we were together was, yeah, yeah yeah oh my gosh and yeah. like so confused as to what was going on and also being from Canada and it's just kind of like what right. is going on? yeah mm, like, the Canada and... lifestyle <laughs> wow I just want to ask you questions oh my god you. yes please do it wait so how Anything. how is it there mm, like COVID wise you mean everything just how, everything like how is your like government like in shambles like ours is Well, we're not in an election year. I, 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 yeah, it would be different if like it was because we have elections every four years. I think we're like we're halfway there right now. Okay. So it's it's like different from your schedule. Great. Um, I wouldn't say it's in shambles because if we're comparing, I, I, yeah, I, I feel for you guys. I know that it's difficult, and we have four parties or multiple parties. We don't just have like two. Uh huh. You know what I mean. 
So it's yeah, like yeah. we can we can you know there's there's um more candidates to choose from. Right. And more mm-hmm. views. Like it's yes, it's always hard when there's that polar mm. divide. I know and it, it's funny actually yeah we're recording this on election night and I literally I just, election night. <laughs> yeah. So you know I just want to send out like a caring vibes and, and and whatever happens I you know I hope you guys are safe and and, and happy and, and healthy and all yeah. the good stuff I know it's hard yeah no matter what we'll move forward it'll be yeah. okay I'm yeah. I'm I'm not thrilled but I'm not worried like it'll be okay yeah it's good it's good good vibes though yes. we're always welcome <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for sitting with me. Oh my gosh, of course. This I've had so, so much fun. I feel like I've unpacked so much and I'm in such a better mood. Oh, yay. Yes. Oh, oh I, I love you. I love you. So I wish we could do it in person, maybe soon. Someday. In the near soon. future. Yeah, yeah, when you're on your world tour. Oh, yes. World <laughs> tour to Canada. Yes, please come to Canada. We never yeah. get like anyone. Please come. No, I'll come. I actually really want to go to Canada so bad. Yeah. Because yeah, it's near Michigan, me. right? Oh yeah, very near, very near. Yeah. It's like okay, my sister well, worked in Michigan for a little bit. It's like maybe a seven hour drive. Something like that. Jack, we're going to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Wonderful. anyways. Yes. See you there. Yeah, come and join. We'll go for coffee and see the CN Tower and all that good stuff. Oh, yes. I can't great. wait. Thank you for sitting with me. Um, everyone can, can go and check out Claire's Instagram and everything that she's working on, YouTube, all that good stuff. Um, yeah. Cool. All right, I'm going to pause the recording. <laughs> we can keep talking. Though. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> so fun. Thank you so much for listening to the Art for Stations podcast. If you like what you heard, the best way to help the podcast is to subscribe or follow on your preferred podcast platform and leave a review. As well, follow the podcast on Instagram at artversationspod. You'll find photos of each of my guests so you can match a voice to a face and highlight clips from each episode. Let's keep the conversation going. Send in a DM with your own thoughts about art, as well as any questions you think I should ask my guests. The podcast community continues to grow, and that is all because of you, listener. All bodies are dancer bodies, and all lives can't matter until Black Lives Matter. Till next time.